Welcome to the Being You Pod. I'm Bronwyn. I'm a nutritional therapist, a personal trainer, expat, former dancer, and I love wellness podcasts. What I don't love is having to listen through 90 minutes of an episode over the course of days. I created the Being You Pod. It's the wellness information that you want without the waffling that takes too much time. I can't promise that today's episode won't be all waffle as today's guest speaks with champion Irish dancers on a global platform about resiliency, discipline, determination, and more. Scott Doherty is on the podcast and the episode is epic. Scott is a former world champion Irish dancer. He is a production company co-owner, dedicated partner, choreographer, and mindset coach to elite dancers around the world. We are talking all things resiliency, quietening the noise, and what it really takes in order to make progress, even if you don't know that you want to make progress towards your big goal yet. So without further ado, let's welcome Scott to the Being You Pod. Please do whatever you need to do. Can you hear this chair at all? No. I was wondering what you were doing. I thought you were trying to show me some sort of like exercise that you do before you get started. I was like, no, I could not do that. <laughs> this is my routine. You know, I just got to warm up the oblique. For, you just have for podcast, to, you know? Yeah. For posture. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. Okay. So we're gonna... hi, Scott. Welcome to the Being You pod. Hey, Brown, I'm so excited to be here and chatting <laughs> with you today. I'm excited Love. about this too. It's been a long time coming. Let's get chatty, as some would say. Yes. Let's get chatty. <laughs> Let's get chatty. So we're going to dive into how I met you and actually why I wanted you here today, because I think you've got a really unique story and I think that more people need to hear it. Um, so I met you in, we're going to age ourselves. I met you oh in 2016, mm-hmm. I think 2016. And for me, you were just like that friend that was always there. It was like, I met my friends at work and then all of a sudden they were like and this is your friend scott and i just kind of said okay (laughs) and here's my friend scott um (laughs) quite quite a few years later 2024 and yeah i never had the pleasure of working with you specifically but we've worked in the same venue and as i said in the introduction we both worked in theme parks but we worked in theme parks in very different capacities so I worked in like fun summer, creepy Halloween, joyful Christmas shows. You worked on something super specific. Tell us a little bit about your theme park experience with your specific show. Right. So I am the definition of a one trick pony (laughs) and I am an Irish dancer. And that's, that's my, my one like skill. I like to say. It's a pretty Obviously, impressive one trick. I'm not going to lie. I, I wanted to get really good at my one trick. So that's that's what I did. And uh, luckily, as we know, performing is not just the one trick, no matter what you're doing, mm-hmm. dancing, singing, anything. But I uh, definitely had a unique experience compared to most people at theme parks. It's It's like it's almost like two intersecting circles of what we experienced. Yeah, that. I started actually in a show at Bush Gardens that was, it was called Emerald Beat, and we were contracted by a company. Um, this dance school had created a show years ago, and they were amazing to work for, And but it was, we weren't really working for Bush Gardens, so it was mm. almost like an intro to how to work at a theme park, but we didn't have all the all the red tape or the the rules really at times. Or the drama, let's be real. It's a dramatic traumatic experience depending on where you're placed very true um it's i think all all performing aspects like we can all be dramatic in different ways but we didn't have the the corporate entertainment angle that that makes things just just difficult at times it's not better or worse it's just difficult yeah but then transitioned the show changed into another show celtic fire that then Bush Gardens own and ran that show. And that's the show I was in when I met you. 
mm-hmm. but it was really just summers. It, we, I always felt like the first few years, all of you became friends. I was always off on tours and things during Halloween and Christmas. And although we were all friends, we never really hung out that much. Yeah. Uh, th- those of you that were mainly here for Halloween and Christmas. So I felt like an insider outsider. I wasn't at the theme park all year. That wasn't, it didn't feel like that was my main thing, although yes. it literally was where I was most of the year. Mm-hmm. But I would do the six months at Bush and then I would go off, whether it was River Dance or Lord of the Dance, some other shows. We ended up creating our own shows, but it's, it was a great learning experience being at Bush Gardens. And honestly, not just my experience as an Irish dancer in that very specific show, mm-hmm. but then getting to become friends with all of you. And I mean, there was that one year that we had, I don't even know how many people living in the house here. I think we, here. we all lived there. Like it was just communal, the couches, yes. the bathrooms, the kitchen, all of it. <laughs> Literally. But yep. every single person in the house was a captain or a swing or both. Yes. And just every night, just debriefing all together about what happened during the day. How do you handle this? How would you, I handle this? How it's, I feel like probably learned the most about performing and leading and everything just from those nights with everybody here. It's, it was that it, I wouldn't have gotten all of that just doing my own show. I was yeah. so lucky to be like intertwined with all of you. With and every, your every show. like your performance trajectory, like say, okay, like I've said, I said it before and I'll say it again <laughs> in case anybody skipped the intro, you are a world champion. Like you're a national champion. You have done some incredible things. How many years did it take you to get to that point? Oh, so I'm one of the rare ones because a lot of times we see the best of the best and they're just like these physical freaks of nature in a in a good way <laughs> yeah. that they're just born that way and it's like oh I can never do that all and to be honest some of my friends are those like they were yeah. amazing at 4 years old and they just were amazing i was the opposite where i started when i was 6 i didn't start late or anything mm-hmm. and i was terrible for most of my life literally like terrible i have so many stories about why like People don't believe me sometimes, but the the stories I have, like one friend, every once in a while, she'll text me and say, Scott, whenever I'm having a bad day, I look up old dance camp videos and I just watch you. No. And you know what? I, I feel a lot better about myself. <laughs> I do. And like, luckily I can laugh about that now, but it's, it's true. It was. But like I, 12 year I, old, you would have been scarred if your friend had said that oh, to you. <laughs> big time. And yeah. I remember like my mom one time was asking about our cousins or families like oh I don't know like who's going to be the dancer of the family this that I said mom at their age do you think I was going to be the dancer of the family and yeah she laughed she laughed in my face she's like no absolutely but how not. do you like how do you stick with it when you had so many years of people looking at you and saying oh Scott's never going to be the dancer or Scott's never going to get to worlds or Scott's never going to work professionally as a dancer and now you're like you're coaching some elite dancers in the United States of America. How do you keep be so persistent for so many years when you look back and say, wow, a lot of those years I wasn't great? Right. It's I there's two sides to that because one, I used to look back and, and regret it. I used mm. to think I, I I wish I had figured this out earlier. I wish I just copped on and, and woke up. But yeah, I've realized the fact that I didn't, and I figured it all out when I was older, like I didn't figure any of this out until I was like 17, 18. That's when I started to on my journey to actually figure it all out. Yeah. And I remember every step of the way and all the advice I got, all the, I remember from going from terrible all the way to winning the worlds. And now that's my special gift. I can give the world that I remember all the steps. And it's not just like, I don't know. It's just like, do it like this. Yeah. I, I understand the struggles, but it's, I have to say I'm so lucky for two things. One, I fell in love with dancing. Even mm-hmm. when I wasn't great, I loved the people. I loved dancing. I liked putting on shows. Even though I was not good at it, I loved it. And 
also, I actually never had, and I don't believe most people ever have haters in their life saying those things out loud. Yeah. But some people do, of course, but the advice of like, oh, just like prove the haters wrong, all of that. I don't think most people have a team of people always telling them they can't do things. You it, have the it's subconscious. Yeah, literally. Like mm. it, I had a very supportive family, friends, all the, my teachers. Thank God they had so much patience and belief in me. But yeah. I mean, the only person saying those things was me. And mm -hmm. I, it was when I stopped saying those things, it, I got out of my own way and I could just problem solve. And, so we've got two very important uh, concepts right now, your success. And you just mentioned another really important one, which is support. Like what made you realize there was a gap in the industry for the success, success and support it takes to bring Irish dancers from mediocre or even good to world champions. Right. It's, I think I realized it before I realized it because mm -hmm. one of the things that I did when I decided that I wanted to win the worlds, no matter what I was already touring with river dance, Lord of the dance, a few other shows. And I found every world champ I could. And I sat down with them and I said, tell me your story. Just tell me your story. Like, and I looked for patterns. You're like chasing That's people like, around. Literally oh. some, some were like, Oh yeah, sure. Like some, I had to hound and be like, no, no, sit tell me your story. Yeah. And, but everyone had unique um, things that happened to them. That was a big part of their journey. But I just wanted to hear the stuff that all of them were saying. And I looked yeah. for the patterns and I've actually like promised myself someday I'm going to write a book that it's basically just world conversations with world champions and I love doing all those today. things though. I just made a list and I did those things and almost everything on that list was mental. Almost every single thing, all of the main advice I ever heard throughout my entire career was mental. And mm. I started t teaching and I'm incapable of separating the two. I'm yeah. not only going to tell you what to do with your foot, but like why and why it matters and how we get that stand up to fear. And I had a few moments teaching that it kind of woke me up into this is really important. I mm -hmm. knew it was important, but I wasn't conscious about it. Yeah. And one was I did a workshop at the school and the teachers afterwards were like this is so great i i never realized we were going to get all the the mindset things mm. and all of that too and i'm like what do you what do you mean i'm like that's just how i teach i don't like that's no this you. is like so great and then i think the one that really made me think i have to lean into this was i was doing my last private lesson with a dancer that i worked with almost weekly for a while she was doing her last national championships we finished and she she left went out the door and she came back in a couple minutes later and said scott i just want to thank you uh, and I went, yeah, of course, like great job today. She's like, no, no, no. I hear your voice in my head every single day. I'm wow. Like, Are you serious? Really? She's like, yes. Like in school, in dance, in other sports, in work, all these things. I hear your, your voice and it doesn't help me just with dance. It helps me with life. Just about like not judging myself and just make an adjustment, this and that. And those are things that I'm going to take probably for the rest of my life. And I was just floored. And I was, I was so grateful that she had that conversation with me mm -hmm. because I, it really thought like, okay, I really need to lean into this because it's not, it's not just dance. I yeah. have enough passion that I want to help dancers just with dance, never mind as people. And yeah. I just slowly but surely started um, talking to other teacher friends of mine and everything. And they're like, oh, I have a dancer that might need help. And I kind of mm -hmm. just started doing it without realizing what I was doing. Yes. And then it's, it's snowballed into this amazing um, part of my career that, that this has become my greatest passion in the world of dance by far, like no, no question. What are two pieces of advice that you find you're most commonly giving the dancers that you work with? Again, whether they're trying to be number one in the world or whether they're just trying to rank in the top hundred at nationals, what are the two pieces of advice you're constantly giving your dancers? Right. So I'd say, even in the question, there's an answer there because for me, it's what's your why? Mm -hmm. like, what is your why? Like, do, do you want to win the worlds? Do you want to just have fun? Do you want to just know your dancers? Yeah. Whatever. It's because it doesn't matter whatever it is. It's you're the only person that can decide that. My greatest like, like 
passion, that's not even the right word for it because I feel so strongly about it, is trying to make sure that every dancer and every human, if you're not going to go for something, it's because mm -hmm. you don't want to go for it, not because you don't think you can. Yeah. So if you don't want it, awesome. Why would we go? Why would you put yourself through hell to get that if you don't even want it? Totally. Like that's, and whether it's like just kind of like clearing the noise out of that or when they want it but they're scared or anything we just make that why the loudest thing okay and that's your north star like if if you know your why why are you doing this because motivation we all know motivation is not real like most days it's not yeah. how it works you need discipline mm -hmm. but if you don't if you don't know your why and how badly you want it like you'll never be able to set up your systems to make yourself do it or if and your then, why isn't genuine, then you're, then that makes exactly. motivation even harder to come by when it's not genuine. Yeah. Oh, and my second, Nailed second it. piece of advice, what would you give? I would say, um, this is one of my favorite things I love to say to dancers. As your friend, I don't, don't want you to judge yourself because mm -hmm. like, I just don't want you to feel that way, especially about dance. Uh, like Irish dance specifically, that's silly. Like it is my greatest love. Don't get me wrong. But it's silly at the end of the day if we're going to um, stress ourselves out every day about it. Yeah. But as your coach, I don't want you to judge yourself because you're slowing down. It's literally slowing you down. If you're in a class and you spend 30 minutes out of two hours beating yourself up, yeah, that is 30 minutes that you could have been problem solving. I think that's such an interesting point, especially for me coming from a conventional dance world or a competitive dance background going to a classical ballet high school program and then going into one of the most now one of the most competitive contemporary dance programs in the nation like mm -hmm. you the time and i hate to think about the time i have wasted comparing myself to other dancers that i wanted to be like or not even comparing but just looking at comparing myself to myself and saying well wow, last year you were better at this and now you're not great i think what i've noticed with any sort of performer or artist client that i've had in my clinic or on my roster is exactly as you said when you stop focusing on comparing yourself or focus on being down on yourself and you focus more on being proactive to yourself or to your routine that's when you're using your time more effectively and you're actually able to get the results even quicker yes it's and like that's at the core of all that is because i i'm sure it'll come up a few times while we're talking but i hate general advice i just hate yeah it. um because i i'm I've challenged dancers all the time to, if, if they tell me something I've never heard before, like they'll, they'll win. I, mm. but we all experience all the same things. So we have to, the thing is like, nothing's wrong with you. Like you're not broken. You don't need to be fixed. Like it's mm -hmm. so normal, yes. but how we have to problem solve has to be unique to you. Yes. And like one of the general advice things that I love and hate is it's you versus you. And it's just, you have to be better than you were yesterday. Cause that is true. 100% mm -hmm. true. But in dance, we are also against other people, whether that's competition, auditioning for shows, all that is, it is a race of progress. It's a mm -hmm. race of mm -hmm. progress. Not just, are you making progress? Yeah. It's a race of progress. Mm -hmm. Dancers will come to me and say, I got 20th at this competition last year. I got 20th this year. What happened? I thought I was so much better. I said, that means you were so much better because yeah. everyone got better. Yeah. The thing is, like, if, are you making more progress faster than everyone else? Auditions, competition, whatever. And every single second that you're slowing yourself down is just killing you. And that does not mean more dancing and more running yourself into the ground. Mm -hmm. It's are you making progress? I don't care how if you're outworking everybody. Are you making more progress than everybody? And that's a big thing I learned in those conversations with world champs. It's they every single one of them said I was training more than I ever trained in my entire life leading up to winning. I said, okay, so I have to, I have to dance a lot more and practice more. Okay. That makes sense. They're like, that's not what I said. They said I was uh, training the most I yeah. had ever trained. If anything, I might've been dancing less than I had almost ever danced because I was dancing and making sure it was right. And then get the information. What do I need to work on? Mm -hmm. 
And then just, okay, let's get stronger. Let's get more capable. Let's more flexible mobility work yeah. in my brain. And then when I try again, the dancing is just going to be better. Yeah. Like, like we don't have to drill it. So like mm-hmm. mindset, mindset comes to mind a lot and mindset comes to mind mm-hmm probably like the last thing that a dancer would think about when they are going for those top spots in the world Mm -hmm. when you started focusing on mindset what was the first thing that you noticed started to change Ooh, it um everything i mean it's my like my unique story is that i went to my first world championships when i was a senior in high school and i I mean, I had a fine day for me, but not even close to um, placing. Yeah. And the night before, my one of my assistant teachers, I asked her why it felt like I was walking next to all these Irish and English guys. And she just looks at me and she's like, because you're walking. I was very offended. But <laughs> I, I was just like, how, how dare you? It's, it's yeah. our choreography or it's our school or it's this or that. Like, I don't know. Right. And she's like, no, compared to what you could be doing, you're walking. And I I just like shrugged it off. I'm like, okay, cool. Yikes. Cool. That I'm was such harsh. a punk about it. <laughs> yeah, right and then the next day i wanted to watch the results and everything because i'd never seen a big spectacle and the guy that won his teachers were doing my workshops so he won doing the same choreography as me and okay. i found out it was his fourth time winning four time world champ so i had like it was my light bulb moment which now i call my taylor swift moment of like realizing oh i'm the problem it's me yeah it's, it just it Cute took song. over my body Cute and stare, staring at that stage i promised myself every single time i'm all in not i'm gonna put my legs up here i'm gonna do this effort all in or nothing yeah. i'm gonna try as hard as i can and always try to be better and it was from that one year i went from one of the last in my competition to six in the world in one year wow and i love like whenever I'm talking to dancers, workshops, especially when there's a whole group, I'm like, how much do you think I was working outside of class and all yeah. these things? I was like, oh my goodness, every day, so like much. hours and hours, mm. zero. I did not practice outside of class once because I did not have anywhere to practice. And it's not like I had practice every day. Mm. And we did not have private lessons. I had class maybe two or three times a week. And it was just what I was getting out of each class. I was also doing PT at the same time. So like, yeah getting stronger and and more yeah of course there's like that physical aspect of it but you were like once you honed in on your mindset and like your mental health Mm -hmm. around competing and around the goal that you wanted to achieve that's when you really started to see wow progress from zero to hero literally and it's Mm -hmm. like i i love to say there's two ways to get up there and one is how i went from terrible to six in the world I did it accidentally (laughs) I wasn't I had no aim I was just every day can I do this better can I try harder and once I would get I'm like awesome all right well can I do more can I do it harder and I went to that second world just hoping to get closer to placing I had no idea that I was dancing at a top 10 in the world level Mm. so that happened accidentally and Mm -hmm. then because I mean we all know it's not that hard in concept it's a lot of hard work but in concept to get up there and really good and then it's way harder to be really good and end up winning because Mm -hmm. at that point everyone's working hard it's easy to pass all the lazy people like that's the thing like it's a race of progress but when when you're against the best they are literally already probably outworking you so Mm -hmm. that's that's not going to be how you can beat them and there could be like tools in their toolkit that you are second guessing and thinking what tools are do they have and are my tools just as sharp like what do i do i have enough with me do i need more like i think that's a thing is like adding in stuff like i think again just you can even hear the clarity when you talk about it it's like just having the the mental clarity around what you needed to be doing and what you actually needed to be focusing on helped a lot what do you like what was your life on tour like with Lord of the Dance and River Dance and all of this? What was your life on tour like? Um, the best memories of my entire yeah. life. It's just, it was literally living the dream mm-hmm. and the friendships I have from it, the things I learned. Like I, I grew up basically while touring. Yeah. And, and at Bush Gardens as well. 
and it's just it was a dream come true like it i was t touring the world mm -hmm. getting paid for it doing what i love with all yeah. of my best friends yeah. it's just there's there's nothing better it's it's and once again not everybody wants that like they mm -hmm. don't want to do shows and all that great i it was from when i was 11 i think that was my dream i just never thought it was possible so yeah. i was every day i was on that stage i was making 11 year old me um so happy and it just it was a dream come true while also when i decided because i took a break from competing and mm -hmm. then decided okay i, I want to i want to win and that was only because i had friends on tour that every single day they told me scott if you just like practice and like buckle down like you could win anything yeah and even at six in the world i was like no no way there's you no way i can jump five no more way. spots and make it to number one yeah literally like i'm like i got lucky doing that but every day they hounded me until i finally um i believed it but not fully but i believed it enough that it might be possible and mm -hmm. i actually wanted to like touch back like with my main advice there's two things that are like secondary but almost right up there mm -hmm. it's that like believing like that's you don't need to believe in order to do it because right. most people like that's the generic but it's like you just have to believe in yourself yeah, but yeah. how there's mm -hmm. a reason the saying is seeing is believing not like if you want to have blind faith that's awesome you should yeah. have blind faith in your potential B believing that it can happen like that's that's going to be really hard to do until it happens i won the yes. worlds and i still don't believe that it happened like that's that's the thing but i was training trying to win the worlds before i believed it and i know that for a fact because the first competition that I started taking first places off of world champs, mm -hmm. I remember looking at, at the score sheet and being like, wait, wait, are, are you serious? This is possible. Yeah. This is actually possible. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, like that gave me like such a boost to keep going. But you tell me, how was I supposed to be good enough to take first place off of world champs if I wasn't already training to take first place off of world champs? Yep. So like with that in mind, we have to work backwards like what mm -hmm. you were just saying about the best like what are they doing like what are their tools all that like the first way to train was what i did accidentally just like can i be better every day the second way which is actually faster and better mm -hmm. is those guys and girls they're giving you the answers to the test like yeah. if you want to dance like a world champ and, and do that what are they doing watch them study them and dance as good if not better than them yeah Instead and if of just like Scott oh Dorothy. can i be better hound them down if you're scott hound them down and ask them what they're doing so that you can Literally. write your book and help <laughs> dozens and hundreds of other dancers along the way which i think is a great way to do it but yeah like you say it's like seeing and i think again i think a lot of people struggle with that dancers and non-dancers anyway mm -hmm. like we all struggle with you know we don't we're not really sure especially what i see in the health and wellness world like oh i want to be healthier what does that look like to you what does that feel like and actually a lot of people can't sit there and say it looks like this or it feels like that they just are like well it's healthier it's like but if you don't know what that looks or feels like what are you actually doing and why would you again like you say why why would you do it if it's not something that you're seeing or not something that you know is there that you just need access to with the mental clarity like you work a lot on mental preparedness with your dancers what are some things that you are doing now for your own mental clarity and your own mental health because i can imagine it's a lot when you're meeting with these dancers particularly around high pressure environments like worlds and nationals what are you doing for yourself that's helping your mental health stay intact oh yeah um i mean the quick easy answer therapy yeah honestly like i'm mm. i'm very lucky i have an amazing therapist she's she takes care of me and she helps me navigate my my brain and my emotions all of that like i always try to tell whether it's dancers or or non-dancers that i get brought in to schools and workshops and people want to work with me because i'm an expert in irish dance yeah. Why would you not want an expert in brains and emotions and, and psychology helping you with, with yours? And totally. It's it, helping me be a better me helps me be a better coach.
a better mm. person, a better, a better boyfriend, a better friend, everything. There's not one part of my life that hasn't been affected by therapy. And it's, it's really great because I, I, like you said, it gets very heavy at times. And I didn't realize that I was acting like a sponge and, and taking that on. Yes. I was, I would, it's one thing to be tired, but like when you're exhausted in that way and I have my, my therapist, I can't say enough great things about her, but she, she takes everything so seriously with, there's no, like everyone, everyone is a human and deserves the same tools and respect and all that. She works with Navy SEALs in America here. And oh my gosh. when I said, Hey, last time at nationals, like I was drained and like, I just, I took it on and I, I was so burnt out. It's like, I'm going to give you the same tools that I give all the Navy SEALs. Mm -hmm. they have to do. And I'm like, that seems excessive like that. I don't know. It about seems that. extreme, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. And she was like, no, like this is your version of that. Like that's, it's all relative. Yes. And she yes. just gave me the tools to be able to like, let it go through me instead of take it all on. Yeah. And it, it has made me so much better. But if I don't regulate my own emotions and take care of me, yeah. which like actively taking care of me, whether that's eating, sleeping, resting, doing nothing sometimes. Yeah. And I won't be able to take care of dancers. Exactly. So the best way I can take care of dancers is take care of me. All right. So Navy SEALs, mental resiliency, you've got a lot going on. And at the end of the day, when you have those like really high intensity, competitive, just high stakes environment, obviously everybody's emotions are running high from your dancers to their teachers, to their parents. What's your, like, what's your favorite thing to do to unwind or to come back to yourself or to put your health first? After all of that's happened and you've had a really heavy day, what are you doing to relax or decompress or bring yourself back to putting yourself first as opposed to putting your dancers, their teachers, and their parents first? Mm. Great question. Because um, this is... It's, it's going to sound silly, but I have to actively do this, especially because like I have anxiety and I judge myself, mm. nothing, nothing. Like I love doing nothing, but if I'm doing nothing and it's not planned, then I feel bad. I'm supposed to be productive. I'm supposed to yeah. be just doing this or that, or if there's more work I could be doing, I need to plan my nothing, whether it's like days or whatever. And that looks different each time. Sometimes it's literally doing nothing, just walking around, um, sometimes video games or just scrolling on Instagram or TikTok or something. I, I, one of my biggest piece of advice that I give dancers on dance day is to have a distraction plan to mm. distract away from all the stress. And it's it backwards. Sometimes it feels backwards. I should say, because well, we're supposed to have our head in the game and focus and all that. And like, that's not how it works. That's not how focus actually works. Yes. We want to stay away from the bad stuff. And because we can't problem solve until we're regulated and our nervous systems a little bit calmer. Because yes. I'm, I'm a huge fan of neutral. Like whenever yeah. this question usually gets instant tears from from dancers when I have them imagine their biggest stressful day they've had, where mm -hmm. it just all fell apart and just it's not a fun feeling. Mm -hmm. Then I say, now imagine walking into that same competition and you're like you're nervous but like it's not really a factor and you're just there just to do your job yeah and that's it like mm -hmm. how amazing would that feel like, yeah. oh my goodness that would be amazing because that's what neutral feels like mm -hmm. and for me i'm obsessed with what's necessary not what we should or shouldn't there's no such thing as should yeah. or shouldn't if if we're doing it and it doesn't help us why are we doing it so with neutral like everybody thinks like they can make a big jump from negative to positive or not confident to confident. And no one's, I don't know a single person that's ever jumped from one straight to the other. Right. And what we need to do first is get to neutral. And it was like, cool. Well, that's a great step, but neutral people think are right in the middle. Mm -hmm. In terms of doing your job on stage, neutral is right under confident. Yeah. Because if you're neutral, you can just do your job. Being confident helps, mm -hmm. but it's dancers aren't, having amazing classes some nights because yeah. they spent the whole day focusing on their dancing. Yeah. They just had a fine day. They show up and do their job. So I have to do the same thing with myself. I can't problem solve what's bothering me or being burnt out or anything like that until I get myself back down to neutral. Mm -hmm. Like 
because trying to problem solve in the moment is never going to work. And then you're just going to spiral worse. I do something really similar with clients that are coming into nutrition clinic um, with the people that I work with, like most of the time. And I, I see this quite commonly with performers. Somebody will come to me with results from an allergy or intolerance test, or they'll come with, I think I've got IBS because I was working at a resort in Asia and the food was really bad. When actually what we come to discover is that they have been operating at that like higher functioning level for too long. And that therefore comes it like manifests in other areas of the body you're not absorbing nutrition properly you're gaining weight or losing weight really quickly or you're coming back and you're like i didn't know that i was allergic to mango it's like you're actually not necessarily allergic but you're just so used to being in that high functioning level that you need to come back down to neutral and so i don't necessarily like i have pockets of downtime i ask my clients to find their pocket of downtime, their time where they're not doing anything. Because exactly as you say, when you're working in such a high stakes environment, and it's relative to everybody, when you're in that high stake environment, you don't know what your neutral is, you only know what confident or high functioning is, but you have to come back down to that neutral space. Otherwise, you can't actually get back up to confident whether you've been there or not, you can actually get up, you just go there and then you plummet. Whereas you yep. just have to keep the baby building steps. So it's kind of interesting oh, how that helps you love that. come back. And again, it's just, it's just decompress. It's do nothing. Yes. It's decompress. And I can imagine anytime you tell a dancer that they freak out internally <laughs> and just say, you want me to what I it's, need to, yes. because it's like, it's, but it is, it's making that space mentally. And from like a, a parasympathetic standpoint, it's making space for your body to just cruise or coast yes. so yes. then from there you can acknowledge when you're dipping down or you're sliding down into a potentially less than ideal place or you're noticing when you're lifting up into that place where you feel like your highest functioning or like highest performing self hmm. yeah so it's so real it's mm. how, how i i love to say if you're in a plane that was going down and it's like spiraling and you have your parachute yeah. You have to stop this plane from spiraling before you can jump out and use your parachute. Mm. Like, otherwise, like that, you're just, you can never jump out of the plane. So yeah. you got to stop the spiral first um, instead of trying to problem solve in the moment. And that's the hard part about high functioning humans. Mm. You can be in survival mode and be incredibly high function and doing very well. Yes. You don't realize it's, no one realizes they're in survival mode. Yeah. Like that's, that's the thing. But it all comes down to survival mode and fight or flight and all it, the best thing about all this it's just science at the end mm-hmm. of the day it's mm-hmm. it's nothing we're not just blindly guessing at these things it's yeah. just science and everyone describes it in different ways like i know i have different ways from other like i'm not a sports psychologist or therapist or anything like that but i've just been through a lot and helping dancers yeah. i have my unique way of explaining it but it's all the same at the end of the day where it's just, we're all dealing with the same stuff and it's, it's not as wild as you think. Mm -hmm. It's very, my, I literally say to dancers, I think my job is to help them quiet the noise in their head so that they can get back to doing their job. Yeah. And because you've, that's it been there you've been there and i think that's something like you said that gets lost like of course there are qualified professionals that help having a therapist in your corner really helps having a dietitian in your corner can really help when it comes to being a high performer but at the end of the day too it's nice when you have somebody who's been there because not every therapist is going to have been in your unique situation not every dietitian is going to have been in your unique situation but you might have a mindset coach like yourself who has been in your unique situation and so that can be like a good intermediary for when you need just that little confidence boost you don't necessarily need all the strategy and the science you need a combination you need like a midline and i think that's where like having that extra baseline of support can be really helpful What's your oh, least healthiest yeah. habit? Ooh, my least healthiest habit. I mean, the, the easy way to put that would be like not taking my own advice, but nobody takes their own advice. No. Nope. Uh, 
so many times. Like I just, I just said like this great example of like, oh, I just do what I tell dancers. I'm like, that's you know how hard that is for me. Yeah. And I don't. Oh my goodness. And yeah. even it, like in therapy, so many times she'll be teaching me something. I'm like, oh crap. I I say this to dancers all the time. Yep. And she's like, yeah, because really help. Uh, that's the thing. Uh, what you just described is perfect. We all need help, no matter mm. what. Um, my least healthy habit. Um, it can be anything. I would say, I would say, I mean, this is really just the symptom of it, but it's procrastination. Mm. I just, and that comes from perfectionism for sure. Yeah. Like I, I don't, I haven't, I've been talking about writing that book for a while now. Haven't started. It's it'll just, get there. It's, it'll, it will eventually, but I, I struggle with starting because to even get like a book or something like that done, you need a rough draft. Yes. And I'm like I need, but like I need a rough draft. I just want it. I want to do it right, and then I know somebody will go through it and and help Pick and all that. I have no problem, grammar, I have no problem with that. Mm. But like I have to start with a rough draft, and I'm like I don't I don't know how to do. That. I I don't want um, to do that. <laughs> it's it's but it's it just gets in my it slows me down. Yeah. Um, because I just I don't start. I'm I love like I use my overthinking in yes. Uh, the not productive way whereas like i because all these things whether it's my adhd my anxiety overthinking perfectionism all mm -hmm. these things can be superpowers if we use them correctly yeah um it's amazing what we can get done with those but if i don't stay on top of those aka therapy mm -hmm. um then i'm just gonna default into those habits and try to rewire those habits what would be your healthiest habit then would therapy be your healthiest habit? Uh, currently, yeah, probably. Um, honestly, it's it's. Anytime anyone's been like, "Oh, this is better," I'm like, "Therapy." Yeah. Like, yeah, but like you did. I'm like, "Therapy, it's therapy." Like, oh, but like you're you're doing better with work, like making more money. Therapy, it's like everything. Everything yeah. is done with therapy. But it's it's also the same thing that I say to dancers, is that like I'm very aware that I've done the work. Like mm -hmm. it's not like. My therapist, I give her all the credit in the world, but it wouldn't have done anything if I didn't do that work. Yes. And it's not fun all the time. It's just, but I, I love like figuring things that I'm like, ooh, like why? Like, oh, that does bother me. Like, what? I, I love that about myself that I, I want to figure it out. Mm. So it's doing that work because like with dancers, they'll thank me, teachers, parents, whatever. I'm like, oh, they, they're the one that did the work. I, I say the same crap to everybody. Yeah. Like, and it's the ones that actually do it that they succeed. Like there yeah. are plenty of dancers that don't listen to me. And it's like, all right, whatever, I'll just talk to a wall. But for me, it's, <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> it's the, doing the work. If I if I get the bad probably to to put those against each other is if it's something that I tell myself I have to do, I procrastinate and don't do it. Mm -hmm. If it's something that somebody else says I have to do or or gives me a, a job or something to work on, I'm in. Like, and go. you'll do it like speed of light it's already done actually mm -hmm. like i've already done yeah. it thank I you so enjoy much it. Yeah. yeah it's so funny it's like you know it's like telling dancers to put protein on their plate you can tell mm -hmm. dancers to do that all the time but well if they actually don't do it like the only person yeah. that they're gonna be disappointing like they're not disappointing me they're not disappointing yeah. you when they're not doing the work you just know in your head you're like you just have to be the person to do it i can give you the tools i can tell you what tools might work but at the end of the day you have to use the tools otherwise you're not successful yeah. i asked on instagram stories i asked the following <laughs> um if they could ask a ceo or a business executive or a cfo anything if they could ask them any question what would it be one of the questions that came up was what do you focus on when you're learning and you are as we've been made well aware now an accomplished performer an accomplished coach an accomplished choreographer and world champion what do you focus on when you're learning priorities hmm. so it's what is from whether i'm trying to learn how to make something on canva for for my work to try to figure out um what what microphones i want to use to record things like it's i need to figure out what i think it comes down to the why as well but like yeah what am i what's the point of this just because i'm supposed to or not supposed to what what's the point what's the priority because mm -hmm. 
like with with dancing i think it was shows that really rewired my brain in terms of priorities and i don't think i would have been as good of a competitive dancer without the shows because we're so just obsessed with technique and different things but if you're not doing the main point of whatever that move or combo is it doesn't matter like yeah if i'm on stage left on number seven and i have like three seconds to get to number seven on stage right i can't be prioritizing pointing my toes i have to get there <laughs> to get and, from a to b <laughs> and like just literally get there and what's funny is when you actually commit to the main point of things with dance especially you actually do the techniques and things better because yes. if i'm fully committed and I need to get there. I'm going to push all the way through my leg. So my leg's going to be straight. I'm going to push through my foot. It's going to be pointed. Mm -hmm. All this, there's so many dancers, uh, um, they'll be working on a move and trying to do all these technique things. And I'm like, why does this still look weird? I'm like, well, what kind of move is it? I'm like, it's a jump. I'm like, cool. So what should we be focusing on? I'm like jumping. Yeah. Like, and as soon as they actually jump, it might not be perfect, but it, it looks like the actual thing. Mm -hmm. like that's that's the thing we we need to get back to like what's the actual point what's the priority there yeah. If, yeah if we don't have the right priority then you're just you're throwing darts at a dartboard because like my i don't believe the secret is hard work i believe the secret is hard work at the correct aim efficiency like if you're not aiming yes if yeah. you're not being efficient in in being productive like what are we doing so yeah it's not to say I'm, I'm perfect at any of that, but that's, and that has to be unique to you as well. Mm -hmm. For me, like I quit, I think clearing out the noise would be my greatest strength. Like even in my own brain, like what, what needs to happen? I don't care what they're doing. What do I need? Yeah. What's, I, we did show in 2021 um, at Bush Gardens. It was, they wanted to do a St. Patrick's Day show, but in a different venue, all these things. And I with, remember that. Yeah, like Celtic celebration. It was it was a yeah, fun like yeah, combo yeah. of like a few Irish shows they had. And during rehearsals, like I'm very aware like that with my resume and like what the show was and everything. I don't have to be the hardest working person in the room. Like I still like they respect me. They know I'm I'm gonna do my job, all that. I know for me, I have to be the hardest working person in the room. I need to do this properly, full right. out, probably five times more than anyone else. Because when I go on that stage, my brain is going somewhere else. So if I don't, if I don't do that work, I don't care. Like, well, everybody's doing it. Like it's, it's going fine. I'm like, mm -mm, I know me. Mm -hmm. And of course that very first show I dance on stage front and center, start dancing, but the, the doors of the fest house were open and there were streamers coming down from the DJ that just stopped. And all I'm saying like, Oh, the streamers, like, Oh, <laughs> the DJ. Oh, it must've just finished. Oh, cool. Like I get it all while I'm dancing. And then literally when I was like, Oh my God, I'm on stage. And the second I came back to thinking about what I was doing, I yep. screwed it all up. Like, so that's the thing. I, I, I knew I had to like, just do it so much that I, my brain can go somewhere else. That's not a problem. Yeah. Cause it's going to happen either way. I like, I'm just going to acknowledge it and accept it and plan for it instead yeah. of fight against it. You're doing the prep work so that when it boils down to actually doing what you need to do, you're already on autopilot and it makes the process like that much easier. Yeah. I think I'm, I'm good at separating what a need is versus what a want is. Okay. I try to give that to dancers all the time. Like there's, we, we think our wants are our needs. It's, that's not necessary. Yeah. Like what's actually necessary. I think that's yeah. a great perspective to end on Scott. I love it. That is perfect. Tell us how to work with you and also share how, we can connect with you on socials. So my main socials is I really just, my presence is on Instagram mm -hmm. and it's at the Scotty D, uh, D E E two E's there. And I have a website. It's Scott dash Doherty.com. Mm -hmm. Um, and that has all the information of, uh, what coaching is like, what it's, what, um you might experience how you set it up and really i i love just getting questions and everything all the time so i tell people just just message me it's it's fine even if it's just like you just want a question about one thing or a question about how it works and you want to work with me just and i i work with um mainly dancers mainly irish dancers of course that's my thing but i 
I mean, I'm coaching a, a competitive ballroom couple from Australia right now. They're trying to they're trying Unreal. to win um, the Australians. I've worked with uh, like rock climbers, swimmers, musicians, because that's the thing. I'm I'm good at analogies, so it's I I don't need to know every intricacy or detail of your sport or or art or whatever because mm -hmm. our brains are our brains. It doesn't change. I've I've given myself, I love speaking um, goals out loud and I make people do it all the time. Mine is I am going to give a TED talk someday and the topic is going to be based around dance advice is life advice because it's all the same. It's our brains don't change just because we walk in the studio. That TED talk is going to be amazing. Scott, thank you very much for joining me on the Being You pod today. and. If you want to connect with Scott or follow him on socials, I'm going to put everything in the show notes that you need, and we'll see you next time. Thank you, Bob.